Hey everybody, I'm going to get started on this uh, Sony VPL HW45. This was sent in by someone who uh, supports home theater systems. They said that the HDMI port stopped responding. They plug in over here. I suspect it could be a bad main board or maybe it's a power problem to the HDMI section. But either way, before we can get started, I have to get this off. The uh, problem with this mount is that it has these latches. Now normally, you squeeze that and pull back and it pops off. But there's a screw in the side that prevents us from removing it. And you can see it's a security screw. It has a little pin in the middle with the... Uh, you know, the torques on the outside. Um, I don't have one of those with me at the moment. I do have one, I just don't have it here. But you don't really need it. All you need is a flathead, in this case a four millimeter, that can get in there and it kind of wedges itself between the pin and the edge. And then you can, it pops right out. There we go. Then I should be able to squeeze and push. Oh, which way does it go? I think it goes in. Oh, there's one on the other side too. See? Let's see if I can get on that without blocking your view. These are a little tight. But that's good. And then the other one. There's no screw on that side, just this side. It's funny, those for security screws, they're not that secure. These should, yep, there we go. And push in. That gets that off. Now, the back one. This one's a little tough because the uh, arm, this arm is in the way, so I'm going to just manually push that arm over. And then I can get. There we go. So I'm kind of hitting it on an angle. It's a little tricky. There you guys can see that coming out. So that means we should be able to. There we are. So I'll put that back just so we know which way it goes and you can get an idea right there so I'm gonna pop these off too I don't really have to but I don't want to scrape the uh, tables off the bench up so in fact I'm gonna show you what I do to store these so that I don't lose them or mix them up with another mount or I don't know I just, I like to do it because it keeps everything together. I get the mount. I get the fastener with the screw in it. And I lock it back in. Then everything kind of stays together. The screw stays inside. See? All well, the screws are there. So I'll just keep that off to the side. Now we can 
flip this over and take a real look at it. Get my uh, bubble wrap out of the way. I just didn't want to leave that on the table like that. So here we go. SXRD. Nice lens. Zoom. Feels good. Lens shift. Looks good. Set it on its side. Just kind of give it a general look-see on the bottom. This usually has a filter. On some, on some models, there's a filter. Let's see if that is one of them. It just has a little foam dust filter, which is good. We'll leave that on. It's really not too dusty, just kind of a normal amount of dust. Let's pull... Let's pull this off. Add ah, different screwdriver. All right. So here's a new lamp installed oh, very recently. Good shape. Looks good. That's a uh, is that 120 watt, 200 watt. That's a 200 watt bare lamp, Phillips. This was put in very recently. Uh, in fact, if you are in the southeast PA area, I'll leave a. Uh, a link in the description to a uh, home theater company who is very good. Um, they're not cheap, but they're reasonable. And let's be honest, you get what you pay for. So, if you guys are in the area and you need really good home theater work done, contact these guys. I've done a few jobs for them. A couple of these videos have been products for them. There. It's back in. Put our door on. This is going to make a... I'm going to do a lamp replacement video on this one, too. All right. So everything looks good. What I'm going to do now is we're going to move this, and we'll set it up with a signal. All right. So... Ready to try it. So let's get to the power button over here. No difference. All right, well. That tells me that we need to get into the main board. So let's turn her off and I'll be right back. All right, we're back at the bench. Let's see what we gotta do to get inside here. The goal to get to this board, usually, usually you can get to it through the bottom, but eh, with this one, don't know. Like all Sony stuff, <clears throat> arrows point to the fasteners. So we're going to start there and just anything with an arrow. Looks like we might have to go through the top to get to the bottom, but we'll see. I'm really hoping that we don't have to do that. 
Maybe that's just a jack panel. The board is elsewhere. Pardon me, elsewhere. Five I worked on had stuff under here that does not. All right. See, I had that foam under that uh, bubble bag under there to keep the top from getting scraped up. All right. see if I can, can I get just that off? No. I am going to take just the uh, board out though. There we go. Now we have a keyboard. I'm going to put this somewhere else. Let's do a tour. Plug the uh, keyboard back in. There we are. Now we can control stuff if we need to. So let's see. Jack panel is here. You can kind of see the main board down there. Boo. That looks like it's all under this. Looks like this whole shroud has to come off with that fan. Let's see. Gotta be one more screw that I'm missing. Get my flashlight. Let's see. Got that one. Uh, I think I see one. Come on. So that's um, exhaust right there. It blows the exhaust out. There's the main board. Here's what I'm looking for. So this that's where the HDMI comes in. So we're going through that silicon image chip and this one. So I think what I'm going to have to do is look up see what kind of data I can find on this because those little I find something to point with so these guys right here those maybe those 
or these. Any one of those could have gone bad. I think this chip feeds it over to here. I think this is for HDCP maybe, or you know, a, a separate function because you can see HDMI 2 goes right to here. That's the data lines right there. And then we have most likely output that goes over to here. And this one goes directly into that. So that's what I need to look at first is what that chip does and what powers it. Because the uh, suspicion I have is that if one of these front end bits isn't bad, maybe there's no power getting to this chip or that chip is bad. It would just surprise me that one of these front end uh, TVS diodes wouldn't have taken the uh, brunt of whatever happened to it. So I'm going to go do a little bit of research and then I'll be back. All right, so the Sony, I want to see if we're getting anything into the HDMI because I don't know if it's either of those HDMI chips, if they're bad, or if there's a problem with the main video chip that's under here, under this heat sink, uh, or what. So far, power stuff seems okay. I went around, well, you guys can't really see. So I went around both of these chips. Uh, projector's not on at the moment, but I'm gonna use a plastic pointer instead. So I went around this chip. This has HDMI 1. You see those traces right here? Those are the uh, data lines. I have a uh, printout of the HDMI pinout. So this is kind of the stuff I was looking for. I was looking to see if I had the clock, if I had the uh, hot plug detect and the five volt power, and it seems like I do. So at least on the, uh, the input. So like I know my signal, my input signal is good. And I have a signal up to here. So I wanted to see what I have on the output. So uh, input two must have some special processing because it has that secondary chip, probably for HDCP or uh, what's that other thing, MT something, I forget. But the other op other input option, and that feeds into this chip. So HDMI 2 goes through here, goes into there, and then goes here. HDMI 1 goes directly into here. This selects between 1 and 2, and then feeds it into the main chip. At least that's what I've been able to deduce. I can't get a service manual for this very easily. Uh, VPL HW45ES be nice to know if I could get a service manual. The easy fix would be a new main board. So if you had the money and not the time, you'd put a new main board in this. That would fix it. Uh, main board is kind of expensive though, so not happening here. What I do want to check though is which chip is the problem. If it's this one, or that one. So really what I want to see is if we have the same kind of signal going in that we do coming out. So let's turn it on. And my Raspberry Pi is awake. So if I go on, let's see, this should be TMDS1 input yep TMDS1 has, a, has something Two, yep, TMDS2 is good. Let's go to the clock. 
think this is clock. That looks good too. In fact, I'm gonna just restart the pie just to make sure. Because to me, it looks like we have a, uh, that these input chips are working. Yeah, so we got something there. And let's see. Hot plug detect is pin 19. Hmm. Yeah, HDMI one. Yep, 4.8, we got that. Although the, uh, the hot plug detect does not seem to be working. I hope I'm looking at that right. It's got nothing. So let's see, that is, this should be ground? I must not be counting my pins right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, ground, I think this should be ground. Oh, it is ground on that side. And that side it's not. Okay, I measured on the wrong side of a capacitor. All right, ground. And then five volt power. Yep, got that. But no HEAC, hot plug detect. I don't know what I'm supposed to catch there. But I got nothing. Let's go down to the one volt scale. And I'm going to restart my pie. Let's see if we get anything. No hot plug detect. That's curious. Let's check the other side. And put two. And see if that's acting the same way. Because if there's no hot plug detect... Now again, I don't know what that signal is supposed to look like for hot plug detect, but I imagine it's supposed to do something. Nothing. Input. Let's go to two. Nothing. Now see, that's interesting. No hot plug detect. This is what I'm talking about. That HEAC, I don't know if that dash at the end means it's supposed to be negative or what. Probably. So I kind of feel like it should be pulling a signal down. Hmm. Let's uh, just see if I have anything on the connector end. So that should be, all right, so that should be that pin on the far right near the uh, clip. I got 
nothing on that. So nothing there. So let's check without this. Oh, I did check to see if there was anything. Let's just check one more time. Is that pin? Nothing. That might be the case. However, one thing I want to try first. Let's see. Let's turn it off. We got nothing. Oh, there it goes. All right. So I'm going to turn it off. We'll let it cool down. And then I have uh, firmware on here and the firmware hopefully will change behavior uh, I don't know if it's gonna help but it can't hurt just gotta wait for these fans to finish spinning let me just set this back over here so it can help the uh, lamp a little bit and then we'll go back we'll check this with the scope in a little bit so I'm gonna let this cool down I'll be right back all right, so I downloaded the firmware for the HW for the VPL HW45ES. I'm gonna plug it in. It's a FAT32 formatted thumb drive. No signals, no other wires attached. According to the instructions, once I have the firmware folder on there, I can just hit power, and it should update itself. Let's see. Flashing green light on the top the lamp struck I don't know if it's supposed to do that I don't know ooh light change colors we have a yellow light I assume that's the firmware upgrade I guess it's kind of an amber light more than a yellow light. It's a red and green. Let's see. Are there any other flashing lights? Just that one that's always flashing. And there's another one over there, which I don't recall that other one flashing. What I'm hoping, I mean, it's, it's a little chance. But sometimes firmware can get corrupted. Like I'm assuming it's writing to that chip, that Toshiba TC TC58 NVG 30F. That's uh, looks like a RAM, a uh, ROM chip. So hopefully it's rewriting that, and we'll see what happens once it's done. And maybe it'll flip a bit or something so that the inputs work. All right, I think it finished. The uh, little LED went solid. And now it's back in standby. We have no flashing LEDs on the internal. On the internal? On the main board? Yeah, we'll go with that. Unplug our magic firmware stick. And let's uh, oh, let's get a signal plugged in. Go to HDMI one. Some flat that that all right lights are all coming up no picture yet oh there we are HDMI two Let's 
HDMI 2, anything? Nothing. Hmm. No response. And curiously, the uh, keyboard is not responding either. Or at least the input button, menu button, and that's not responding. Is power responding? Now, well, that's unfortunate. That main board must be in really bad shape. Okay, that turned off that time. I'm going to let it cool down. I'm going to power the cord, pull the power cord, and then we'll try it again. It's just weird that this wasn't responding. Okay, it started back up on its own. So that main board is acting more and more strange. But that's uh, kind of good, I guess. It tells me something's up. I just want to start over. Just start over. Let's see what happens. Let me move this out of the way. Eh. Leave it for now. It's got to cool itself down a little. I'll bring you guys back up once the picture's up. All right, lamp's coming up. I should have a picture soon. Yeah, there's something up with this main board. It is not liking the new firmware, even though it's the right firmware from Sony. The uh, it did turn off when I double tapped, so that's good. But none of the other buttons are responding. I think what I may do is see if there's any other firmware. Maybe I can roll it back to an older version, something like that. I'm gonna look at that first. I did price out a main board. They're about 1200 bucks. Eh, not really, I don't wanna do that. But I'm gonna see what I can do with uh, firmware on this, and uh, I'll be back. Hey everybody, uh, we have a Sony VPL-HW45 that needs a Replacement main board installed. This is the replacement main board. Anybody who saw the live stream saw me harvest that. This is the, the uh, piece that it's going in. So what we have to do here is get this out and put that in there. Now I learned the other day a lot about how these are assembled. There's four screws that drop in through there that hold this whole optical assembly in place. It looks like I probably have to take that out. 
there's no way to get to a few of the screws. There's one, yeah, there's one there. I can get to that one. Um, I have to take out all of the these guys to get to it. So I think what we'll do is carefully disassemble. See how much of this I can loosen up to move just to get my screwdriver in there. I really don't want to have to disconnect everything. Uh, anything I touch is a potential uh, future issue, basically. You know, the less you change, the less problems you can have. So to do that, I think what we'll do is we'll start looking over here. You see there's um, these two wires. In fact, let's see if I can... Hey! Oops, of course, I bumped the tripod. But it zoomed in on these two cables. And these two cables are the only two connecting to the optical assembly. This cable, which I squeeze both sides and gently wiggle back. This is the main video data information cable. And this cable over here, uh, I believe, is just power. Uh, I don't believe there's any large connections in here. The only other thing that's going to kind of get in the way, there's a few ancillary cables. We have the temperature sensor on the back of the lamp area. I'll unplug that. I just want to make it so we can get into that main board easier. And then this wire goes to a temperature sensor. Oof, squeak, squeak, squeak. Can I? Almost. There we go. So we'll take that out. That is a, it's a two wire, probably a, you know, a thermistor or something, but let me get my uh, flashlight here. Let's see, that is, nope, I didn't even have that in frame, that was terrible. So I took the temperature sensor out of here, it was in there and held in by a screw. So I got that out. This is connected to the power supply, so if it runs too hot, it'll shut down. So this says it's a 115 degree C. 250 volt, uh, one amp maybe, but at 115 C, this will open. So two, what's that? 230, 240 ish, something like that Fahrenheit. So that's to get pretty hot back there. Um, anything over 180 C or so will start to plasticize some of this plastic and it can get soft. Uh, melting point of ABS and polycarbonates pretty high. I mean, you know, in, in the realms of plastic. Um, but you don't want to take a chance of anything deforming. The other part we're going to take out is the... Uh, I'm going to take out the lamp connector. The lamp connector is in here. That guy. The lamp is installed, but I want to get that connector out because that will make moving this optical assembly a little easier. So we're going to unplug it, unwrap it, just let it set off to the side. Then there's a ground strap. I'll take that out. Now, I might not need to take that out. And one thing I'm going to do, because this is one of those spots that's easy to forget, so I'm just going to start the screw back in there. We'll leave that. And then we'll unplug that fan. It's this fan right here. Actually, we'll leave those wires in. Let me just un unthread all of that. Yeah, that's fine. That other wire plugs into that fan. We can leave that. We can go back to the front. In fact, let's, let's look at everything. The next thing I want to take off is this plastic shroud on the front. That just makes it easier. 
Um, I already took out some of the screws holding it when I was initially disassembling. Hopefully I recorded that. If I did, you won't hear me saying this. <laughs> Actually, you probably will. So I'll take that out. That, yeah, see, I already took out. There was a screw in here, screw in there, and then here and here. So I'm just going to set that in the back. Now in here is the power supply. Not worried about that. Um, this, oh, the LED board. Let's unplug that. And then just down here, there's just a couple things plugged into the main board that run up to the fan. But nothing to the front optics. We'll get to that stuff once I lift the optics out. You can see it's got a healthy fan shroud there. So to get those out, I think I may even need a longer. Eh, just maybe. I got that one. Just kind of feeling for it blind a little, just to make sure I got the height right. All right. So we can do that. I just need to just have a little bit of that sticking out. And then... have one here. The uh, little light, a little light. Really helpful. Great addition. Mm -hmm. There it is. Oops, fell off. Just like the other one I took out, that screw gets easy to get stuck down there. So let's get to this one. Come on. Oh. Same thing. I probably have to remagnetize that, but that's all right. We'll get those screws out so I can put them back in. Just want to make sure all that stuff's out of the way. Set that wire over there. Um, that's disconnected. That's disconnected. I think. Yep. There we go. One screw and to find the other one. Set the uh, optic assembly here to my left. Then there's the other screw. So you can see that's actually not too bad to remove. There's the whole optic assembly. There's the lamp. There's the control board. It's all one piece. And this is this is the main issue right here. So that's what we have to take out next. So first things first, let's get all this stuff out. I already took the sticker off. Probably didn't really have to, but I was trying to see if I could access the uh, the LAN. Still, actually, I'm going to try to do that after we put the new main board in. I'm going to, I'm going to block the camera first, but uh, I'm going to see if we have any communication to the LAN because they blanked it out, but I don't see any chips missing that would, you know, make me think it doesn't work. Like a lot of times they'll have the connector, but the, uh, you know, the actual network chip will be missing. Like in, in this case, I'll show you on the new one. So 
there's LAN, there's the filter, and then that IC230, I'm pretty sure is the LAN chip. So it should be doing stuff. Let me just get this safely over here. All right, so those fasteners are out. That means we can take out those. Let's get that, 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 and that. So now all the screws are out. This is technically ready to come out. There's a heat sink pad underneath but we're not going to break that connection until we get the wires unplugged so we'll just go around unpluggy plug that's keyboard temperature sensor and door switch lamp door switch right here fan fan Okay, so that's good. This is the new one. This is the uh, heat sink pad from the harvested unit, just in case this one doesn't look good. So this should now, yep, there we go. Just lift that AC wire out of the way. Now the whole thing just lifts out. I think the problem is in here, and we'll take this one off to look at. But let's see, let's take that heat sink pad, keep it with that one. We'll get this heat sink pad, we'll line it up. They have a little, a little mark that lets us know where it goes. Just flipped it over so that the uh, indents from the chip will be on the bottom, they'll flatten out, and then it'll make new indents from the chip, from the chips on this one. So let's get it lined up, push that wire back, and we'll use those uh, remote connectors to help key that in. Let's get these wires out of the way. Squishing any connectors or pinching any wires, that's good. Okay, let me put the old one back over here. Let's get these screws. These are the screws for the main board. And I am going to use the drill to start them. So let me turn that clutch way down. Put one over on this side, just trying to even out the uh, pressure on the on the heat sink pad, so that it you know settles in. You could probably just go around and tighten them, but I suspect if we looked in the Sony manual, we'd probably see something about putting them in a specific order. And I have the clutch all the way down. Yeah, you can see I should be able to, so, you know, I'm not over tightening anything. Then I'll get the hand driver and snug these all down. You can see how loose that is. I'm able to get, I could probably get half a turn if I really tried, but quarter turn is plenty. So those are in, that's good. Let's plug in the cable that runs up to the optic module. I think that's sending low voltage differential, although that might be HDMI. It's possible that it's HDMI all the way up to the thing and one of the processing chips on that LCOS control board breaks down the uh, HDMI. It would make sense, but I don't know. The service manual doesn't mention that, I don't think. Plug this in. 
plug this guy in. We'll get our keyboard and temp sensor. Plug that in. Come on. Get me straight. There we are. This one, this is the, uh, that's that fan up there. All right, that's good, that's so good. Let's just group all these over here because we can put the uh, optic module back in now, which is exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna support it. No, actually, I'm gonna back you guys out. All right, so now we can put that optic assembly back in. I'm going to support it in two places so that nothing pulls itself out of position. I am going to try and tuck that wire out of the way. Nope. All right, well, just have to deal with that after this is in. The other wires should be fine. Hey, I like that. Just kind of dropped right in, didn't it? Let's see. Almost. It's a little back. Oh. <laughs> Wires out of the way of that duct. Let's see. That's clear. Rotate it. That's clear. That's good, that's good, those are good. That's, uh, that actually wasn't too bad at all. Oh, that was a noise I heard. All right, you know, so let's, uh, let's start putting it back together. Put this ground strap in before I forget. This has to go in there and there. So I wanted to do that before I put the, uh, the screws in. So let's put these screws in. Now I have the clutch set really low. There we go. Let's get these plugged back in of our video interface, power, let me un undo that. This is the uh, temp sensor that has to be reinstalled back there. We'll do that in a moment and get the, uh, the LED. This is the uh, LED that tells us the status of things. And then fan back in. Come on. Untangle. There we go. There we go. That's in. Let's get let's get the uh, lamp connector back in. going to wrap that around here, that around here, and then since the lamp is already in, I'm just going to plug it into the lamp and snug it down there, and then we'll get these guys squeak, 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 squeak. 
and again these are plastic threads so you want to run the screw backwards until it starts right there because you don't want to cut new threads especially on this kind of plastic this uh, LCP it's like a liquid crystal polymer or something and that stuff will tear up real easy then we need to put the temperature sensor back in let me find you guys a better vantage point there we go so that goes in through the side and then it's going to go up and over oops I was trying to do it without taking that screw out, but I did, I did, I did, I got it under. Okay, that's good. So squeak, squeak, squeak. God, that's annoying. That's back down. Then we have this wire for the uh, temperature, goes there. And that stuff will be for, is upcoming over here. All right, we're almost ready to test it. We need to put the uh, exhaust duct assembly back in. This thing's pretty cool. It has all sorts of, uh... actually let's open it up and take a look at it. I'm sure it's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but let's just make sure there's no dust. Uh, I don't know why there would be. I just want to see how they baffle, how they do the baffles. So let me pop these two screws out, and then it's just clipped together. So this will take all of, you know, two minutes, and it'll give us some neat insight. All right, there's the fan. Keep that where it is. Come on, you. There's the fan, Ultra Flow from Nidec. It's a good fan. And then here's the baffle assembly. This is where the fan blows in, and they have these these angled baffles or curved baffles to slow the air down so that it makes less noise. Air makes noise when it goes past obstructions. There you go. So you can see the air comes in, and it just kind of slows it down. It also keeps light from reflecting and leaking out. So it's a... Uh, have you ever heard of a hush box for your projector? That's kind of what this is. Alright, so let's put this back together. It's going to be like that. Let's get that clip on. Yep, there we go. Let's put this screw back in. And again, I am turning this backwards so that so that we can uh, not cut new threads. All right. So we can put this back in the projector. So what I want to do is I want to test it all first before I start putting all the case pieces back on and the connectors along the front. I'm just going to set that in. You can see the way that lines up with that back. And we have our fan wire. It goes there. Make sure that's all lining up, which it is. Um, let's put one screw in here just to hold that fan in place. There's some screws on the back and sides. There we go. And then we have the keyboard, which plugs in here. So I can just set that here for testing it. Let's head over to where I have an HDMI cord so that we can fire this up and see what happens. All right, so let's get our HDMI cord. Actually, do I have their computers off? Right. Let's plug in 
Come on. There we go. Our HDMI cord. And let's go to, we'll start with HDMI 1. Although I kind of suspect they're going to be using HDMI 2 more. But we'll see. That's why I get that wire a little dressed better so it doesn't drape over the projector. And then let's get our power cord. Make sure it goes in a standby. We have our red light, which is good. Let me fire up the computer. And we'll fire this up in a moment. All right, so power. Here we go, it just went green. Let's see if the lamp is coming on. Yep, lamp is on. You can kind of see down in there that we got some light coming up, and pictures coming up. Let's get you guys looking at the screen. All right, you can see Windows is booting up here. Although this isn't very interesting, so I'll bring it back once Windows is booted. But we have HDMI here, so that's actually really huge. All right, I love it. We have HDMI. Let me, uh, let's get some other stuff going on here. Open. There we are. Let's get the internet. Okay, so I got uh, YouTube started up, and now we're looking at uh, it's just some lo-fi hip-hop thing. Um, these are nice little test videos because, you know, there's enough stuff happening and that it's not just sitting there on a static picture. So yeah, like I said, this looks pretty good. Let's uh, head back over to the bench and finish reassembly. We'll uh, turn it off. There we go. I'll see you guys back at the bench. Alright, before we do the final reassembly, let's... Just see what we find here. Because when I was doing the troubleshooting, which I'm pretty sure I recorded. If not, I apologize. I'll go over it quickly. Uh, what I did was I plugged in an HDMI source. And then I used my oscilloscope to trace the uh, signal from the inputs. I would trace it each chip point you know these little uh, those little ferrite beads I think they are um, and I would have signal going underneath this heat sink but nothing that I could tell coming up to there so let's see what we got man that is on there how can we get that off without damaging something. I know. Let's get a hammer. Just kidding. I just don't want to scrape the board up, so I'll put that plastic bit under there and just... There we go. So, my guess is something is wrong here. Either there's a bad... BGA connection up inside there. You know, this does get pretty hot. Maybe reflowing it would fix that. Although I would think with everything tied down tight, that would have held it in place. But, I don't know. I might investigate this further now that I have a scrap chassis to work with. Uh, I kind of would like to know what the true failure mode of these are. Uh, I am not going to treat this board like scrap yet. Like I said, a new board's pretty expensive, so you may revisit this at some point in my tons of free time. You know, I wish I wish sometimes that I could just only worry about this. I, I have a full-time job. Um, I do this 
as part of my job sometimes, but I also have other stuff that I do. So, so anyway, I'm gonna put it in this bag here. We'll set that off to the side, that wire with it. Let's put the projector back together. Feeling all right. Let's go to this screw next. See if that pulls it down. Uh, see, it feels like it's. Gotta be like a clip. Ooh, I think that was it. Yeah, that just dropped in. There's a, uh, I could feel a, uh, like a gap. And the way that ties into the plastic, the curve kind of pulls the standoffs away. Like there's a, there's a, a top piece, which is the screwdriver, and a bottom piece, which is that. And they were kind of doing this, and once I got it, then it lined up. And now that one, yeah, this, this is now sitting in place, too. There, now you can actually see it straight. This guy's going to be really happy. I saved him a bunch of money. There we go. Tight. Tight. I should say snug and secure. Let's see the next. Do I want to put the top one yet? Or do we want to do... Let's do the... Uh, let's do these guys first. different tripod. I gotta look around at home. I love hitting up, or love for COVID, I loved hitting up Goodwill for tripods because you can always find reasonable tripods at Goodwill. The one I'm using now, I think I paid six bucks for it and it's, it's not a bad one. It's a, uh, a Velbon VE3 tripod. I've gotten Bogan tripods there. They're um, not usually too expensive, but the problem I'm running into is the legs on this one are just a tiny bit too tall to be convenient. So I'm going to see if they have anything that's a little bit shorter. Um, I have a, an Amazon Basics one that, well, I'll be perfectly honest, it's just one step over a raging piece of junk, but it was cheap and it solved the uh, issue at the time, so I do still use it sometimes. It has a quick release, kind of. I mean, it is a quick release, but, you know, it's not that great. Those are in. That's good. I'm not going to put the plastic on yet because I do still want to try that LAN port and see if I can see anything on the network. So the last thing that will go back on is that thing right there. So next is going to be the upper case, but we need to reinstall the keyboard into the upper case. Alright, so keyboard, okay, now I th think this just snaps back in. See, okay, these are the clips, those are the latch. Eh, actually, they both might be. No, these don't bend, these do. So, this side has to go in first. And we have to make sure we line up with the pins. So, put that side in first, and then 
give it a happy squeeze and that's all there is to it. That's now back in. We got the wire which plugs back in this direction. There we go. Then we're going to put this on top of the projector. I almost forgot a couple relatively important screws. The screws that hold that fan shroud thingy in. There we go. Then there's two on the back side. Can't forget them. Need those. Let's see. So we have right here. And then uh, back here, let me, there we are, unplug that top cover again briefly, because we need to uh, get down, get down, get down, down in there. Whoops screw straight. Make sure I don't get too close to any metal. Because if I get too close to the metal, the um, magnetism will pull the screw off. But this is good. That's what I want to see. Like that. Uh, now back here, that should be alright. There's a little, a little spot there for the wire. Yeah, that'll be fine. I was thinking about feeding it through there, but this will be good. So this, that's all right. Oh, let's put these wires back under. Let's keep all that out of the way. Now, let's get the top cover. Plug her in. That's in. Feels good. All right, let me flip it over. And I put some bubble wrap under it because I don't see any scratches on the top of that. And I'm going to keep it that way. Any scratches are not going to come from me. So we're just going to put a few screws in first, just to I'm going to put one here, one here, and one here. And then I'm going to make sure everything's straight. And as long as it's all straight, then I'll go ahead and put in the rest. I don't want to twist the chassis or you know crack anything. I don't want to make it worse than it was. Especially now that it has a you know working HDMI again. There we go. That one. So let's just check now. This all it's all tight. That's the front. That looks good. So once I put the rest of those screws in, this front should snug up. So we got those or these two to put in. In fact, we'll do those next. Because I'm happy with the rest of it. I do I am thinking about this filter though. We'll clean this out. Pardon me. better. And I'm going to talk to them and let them know they need to look at that filter more often. Right, that's in. And let's put this one in. And then we'll put the sides in. 
check the back again. Let's see, there's one, two, there's five screws left, which I think makes sense. I hope it does. <laughs> I hope I didn't forget another one inside. I don't think I did. But I guess we'll find out, won't we? And if I have to open it back up, I have to open it back up. It's just the way it is. But I kind of think I'm good because at first I just put in three. So that was an odd number and I had an odd number left. There we go. And having that um, bubble wrap underneath lets me spin this without worrying about creating a spiral scratch on the top of the case. Alright. Uh, that one. So I think it's just, yeah, these two. And then we're good. And then... I do have the bottom bracket to put back on, the mounting bracket, but I don't think I'm going to do that on camera because uh, we're going to test it. I need to cook it for a little while with it all together. I'm going to hook it back up to the HDMI and I don't know, maybe I'll run a couple of my YouTube videos through it for a while just to make sure everything's solid. That's good. All feels good. Let's uh, let's pop the lamp door open just to make sure everything looks happy in there. That looks good. Still in the right place. I like it. So I'll put that cover back on. That's good. Out of the way. There we go. I uh, I'm gonna call this good from here. Uh, so if you have any questions about your Sony VPL HW45, uh, stick it down in the uh, comments there. I'll leave a couple links in the description. Uh, for where you can get a replacement lamp for this if you need one. And, um, yeah, if you don't subscribe, think about subscribing. Thank you for watching.